Hey, thank you everyone. Glad that you're all here still. Thank you so much to the RJ Spangler group. Fantastic New Orleans style music. It's, uh, it's really relevant right now to be hearing that kind of music as we watch these horrible storms coming in across our uh, southern part of our country, flooding New Orleans once again. Wildfires raging out west as we see the storms brushing up against the east coast, flooding New York streets, flooding in our own neighborhoods, our own houses. It's, uh, it's dire times, but it really, it really warms my heart to see all of you out here today supporting public power, supporting us taking real steps towards ending this uh, catastrophe, towards solving this climate crisis. And so we've got some wonderful speakers here for you. I hope that you uh, stick around. We've got Sean McBrearty. Uh, to, uh, he's a uh, member of Clean Water Action, legislative director, as well as a uh, member of uh, Oil and Water Don't Mix. And he's, uh, he's going to speak uh, to all of you. So thank you. Give, you, give him a hand. Hi, everybody. Um, thanks so much for uh, coming out tonight. Um, I'm Sean McBrady, and uh, I'm the Policy and Legislative Director for Clean Water Action uh, here in Michigan. Um, and I wanted to thank uh, Lauren and Rita and all the wonderful organizers uh, for Ann Arbor for Public Power um, who have really got the ball rolling on this. There's not much more difficult. Um, there's, there's nothing much more difficult than starting a brand new grassroots movement. Um, but right now, the time definitely requires it. Um, so in the face of what we all know is a global climate crisis, we know that we need bold action today more than we ever have before. We know that we have to move away from the current reliance on fossil fuels, and we have to rapidly decarbonize our economy in order to avoid the very worst impacts of the climate crisis. However, Investor-owned utilities like DTE, which are beholden to shareholders and not the public, have shown time and again that they aren't up for the job, and they aren't up to this challenge. To put it more directly, DTE won't make the changes that are necessary to confront the climate crisis because they're too concerned with their profits. Profits are getting in the way of what is best for people. They claim that rapidly transitioning to renewable energy would make their grid unreliable. But in the winter of 2019, a problem at one compressor station left most of our state in a gas shortage during a cold snap. This summer, multiple storms, which as we know are going to continue to get more frequent and stronger as climate change progresses, knocked out power to nearly a million DTE ratepayers. That's not acceptable. Their grid is already unreliable. Their grid is already unstable. And re increasing renewables will actually create better circumstances for grid stability and reliability because solar arrays and wind farms, unlike coal plants and gas plants, are usually dispersed throughout a community instead of relying on centralized sources that then have to carry power large distances from power plants. So why does DTE push back against the necessary energy transition and claim that this transition is impossible despite the mountains of evidence that have been amassed to the contrary. Because DTE is beholden to shareholders and has to keep their profits flowing even when ratepayers are literally without power. To protect their monopoly and to protect their profits, DTE spends an inordinate amount of money buying influence into our political system. It's so nice uh, to be here in Ann Arbor and to see uh, your elected state house representative and state senator here supporting public power and to see so many great members of Ann Arbor City Council here supporting public power tonight. Um, that's really a great thing to see and it shows that uh, y'all have made progress. The grassroots movement for public power in Ann Arbor is only at its beginning. Um, unfortunately, over the past five years, DTE and consumers Energy have spent over $55 million influencing Michigan politicians of both major political parties. And their influence on state policy has been a huge impediment to getting anything meaningful done to address the climate crisis. Ratepayers are left with no other option but to take back control from these monopolistic utilities that value profit over people. 
DTE's profit-driven model of utility ownership does nothing to create a more reliable or sustainable utility. On the contrary, it creates higher fees for ratepayers and less incentive to invest in grid resiliency or adjust energy transition. I came here tonight from Lansing, where we do have a municipal utility, the Board of Water and Light. Not everything is perfect with Board of Water and Light, but obviously Lansing has not fallen into some sort of a deep pit because we have a municipal utility. Um, municipalization alone does not create a perfect system, and it's important to remember that. You're still going to have to push for change to be made at Ann Arbor's municipal utility after you found it. Um, you can't just set it and forget it. Uh, but I do think that BWL offers a couple important comparisons. Um, back in 2013, in the winter of 2013, there was a real bad ice storm uh, that hit mid-Michigan. And it left uh, less, a little less than 40,000 uh, BWL ratepayers, Lansing residents, without power. Um, and power was not restored fully for 11 days. Um, so that was a big problem. But unlike the outages that we've seen under DTE, it wasn't business as usual for Board of Water and Light after that. There were no shareholders from Board of Water and Light getting kickbacks while the utility was refusing to invest in their infrastructure. There was massive outcry from Lansing residents, followed by public accountability for Board of Water and Light, which is almost impossible to do in an investor-owned utility like DTE. In the end, Board of Water and Light implemented over 100 specific changes recommended by the community. And since then, they haven't really had many major power outages in Board of Water and Light service territory. In other words, because they had a public utility that was accountable to the people, not to shareholders, um, and because they weren't worried about profits, they were worried about investing the money that came back to them back into their infrastructure, they were able to solve that problem back in 2013. Another important example from Board, and Water, uh, Board of Water and Light on their water side of things um, comes from, so back in 2004, Board of Water and Light started a program that wound up uh, being at almost no cost to ratepayers to remove every lead service line in their territory. And over 10 years, they removed every lead service line from Lansing, uh, making Lansing the first municipality to not have lead service lines in use. Again, only possible because there was a municipal utility. BWL is not perfect, far from it. We need to push them on renewable energy still but it's a much better model than relying on DTE and relying on this monopolistic system that puts the profits of shareholders above the needs of residents. Um, so thank you very much for having me tonight. DTE's political spending, um, you know, as you all know, makes it very difficult, if not impossible, to hold them accountable. So all of you in Ann Arbor for Public Power are taking the only reasonable step that you can take in demanding a public utility. Of course, DTE is going to fight this with everything they have. Uh, it's not over yet, as you all know. DTE is going to fight this uh, any way that they possibly can, probably with some bad mailers about these guys and other city council members as well. So don't believe DTE's propaganda. Just know that it's going to be coming. Um, but it has been over 100 years since the last municipal utility was founded in Michigan. When Ann Arbor does this, it's going to be uh, a beacon to other communities around the state and a warning shot to DTE. Um, this is going to be a big step and a necessary step to both confronting a monopolistic utility and responding, responding boldly to the climate crisis. If we want to live up to the challenges presented by the climate crisis, taking political power away from the bad actors like DTE and reclaiming community ownership of our power so that utilities work for the people, not the shareholders, is a very important step forward. And on behalf of Clean Water Action, I'm proud tonight to be here to stand with you in this fight. Thank you very much.